Hey guys, it's Jen here from Nails by Jen. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome to my channel. So today's video, as you can see, is another watch me work on this beautiful client. I wanted to keep her clear tips on a couple of them and utilize that to add some flowers. We've got some dried flowers that I've encased in these nails. And then obviously we have used some gel polish as well. So if this is something you're interested in, stick around, keep watching. As always, don't forget to click that like and subscribe for me. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below and let's get started. All right, guys, to start off, I'm going to remove her old design. I love this design. I do have a watch me work on this one as well, so check it out. I will link it below. Bye-bye, old nails. So I'm going to go in with my carbide bit. I'm using a 4X carbide bit. You guys know I love the heavy-duty ones because they just cut through that product very, very easily. So this is a top design, which means that the design is on top of the nail. It is not encapsulated or encased in the acrylic. So I'm just going to go through all all 10 of her fingers and I am going to remove that design and then you will see I will go back to her ring finger and her middle finger and I will actually take the acrylic down a little bit further simply because we are now going to be encapsulating those dried flowers. Now I'm taking it down probably to about a medium thickness. I am not taking it down to a very um, paper thin, or I shouldn't say it, them. I'm not taking the ring finger and the middle fingers down to a paper thin layer because if I do that, then when I go to do her next fill, if we want to remove those flowers, I will have to be drilling um, or e-filing a lot farther down. Now, because she has quite long nails, we can get away with a thicker nail. If she had really, really short nails, I would want to take that product down to a very, very, very thin layer in order to encapsulate those flowers. But again, because her nails are longer, we can get away with a little bit of a thicker nail and we want a little bit of a thicker nail so that they don't break. Now, if you guys are wondering why on my thumb, I have cut my thumbnail um, out of the glove, it's because these are some new gloves. Gloves are a hot commodity around here. They are really hard to find, the nitrile gloves. I used to pay, I think, $7.86 a box for my regular blue ones that I used forever and ever. And now I'm paying $25 a box. And every time I go, they've got a different brand because it's like they can't just keep them in or they can't get the ones in and the costs keep going up. And the problem with these ones is the thumb is super, super short. So when I'm resting my hand piece in the middle between my thumb and my pointer finger, the glove was pushing it out because it wasn't long enough in the thumb area for the glove to actually sit flush against my skin there. So I was finding that it was really bothering my carpal tunnel. So another tip for you guys, if you're finding that your hand is straining in your gloves, Try sizing up, which I always do. So my right hand is a large, my left hand is a medium, but even with the large in these gloves, for some reason the thumb was just really, really short. So I have to cut the thumbs out of them, unfortunately, in order for them to fit properly. So I will not be wanting to buy these ones again. Let me know in the comment section below if where you are located, if you're having troubles getting nitrile gloves as well, because the struggle is really real here. Like even Costco, you're only allowed to buy one box per person. So anyways, I'm going to continue on removing this product, um, this design, and then again, taking down the acrylic on the ring finger and the middle finger.
All right, guys, so you know what comes next. I'm going in with my cuticle pusher and I am pressing back that proximal nail fold and I'm scraping up some of the cuticle as I do that. And then I'm going to go in with my hand file and I'm going to remove any little bits of lifting that are left. And I'm also going to be removing the shine from that natural nail and refining the shape so that when I go to apply my product, I will not have as much filing to do at the end. If you do a lot of your shaping at this stage, when you go to apply your acrylic or your gel, you won't have as much finish filing to do. You'll just be more so refining the shape and sharpening edges. Right, guys so next I'm going in with my cuticle bit from the pink chair I really like these guys they are called the micro taper I believe I always forget the name of them but they are an Erica's bit now I tend to turn my clients finger so that I can go along it with my e-file and I'm not pushing it straight into the nail I know a lot of people will choose to do the left side going in forward and then switch the e-file going in reverse and then they'll do down the right side of the nail Unfortunately, I've tried this and it just feels really awkward to me. So you'll just notice I just get my client to kind of turn their finger so that I can lay my e-file properly along that nail and get all of that cuticle off. So once I have removed all of the cuticle, I am going to go in with my dusting brush and I like to use soft brushes on my clients. I really don't like to use those hard bristled brushes I've mentioned before in other videos. I just find that they're really not pleasant for clients. So I just use these little ones. I do sanitize them. Um, at the end of the day, everybody's brushes get cleaned and I'm going in with my swipe. Now it says prep on this bottle because I used to use my own custom prep solution, but I've now switched over to the swipe. I've been using it and I'm still kind of waiting to see when clients come back if there's you know a noticeable difference if some people who had lifting are no longer having lifting um, but I am using the swipe solution and I'm just using a cuticle excuse me not a cuticle a smile line brush and I am really scrubbing into the nail and getting all of the dust out and then I'm going to be applying two layers of my protein bond and again I always mention you guys will notice that it's in a different bottle than the protein bond comes in and that's simply because I have a hard time holding the little brush that comes in the small little protein bottle, um, protein bond bottle. So I've just chosen to put it into a different bottle and I just find it a lot easier to use. So now I've pulled out some of my gold leaf that Glitter Mix Canada had given me as a free gift when I made a purchase quite some time ago. And I'm just going to take it on the side here and use my tweezers and I'm just going to break off pieces. So I'm going to be applying the flowers and the gold leaf just to the ring fingers and the middle fingers. So I wanna make sure that I have enough. Um, in the end, I did have a little bit extra, but it's not a big deal. I have an abundance of gold leaf. So if I throw out some of it, it's not the end of the world. Now you guys know this stuff is kind of a pain in the butt to work with but I really wanted to use the gold leaf instead of the gold flake that I generally use just to make it a little bit different and because she's my last client of the day I always have extra time and we are always having a good time laughing and watching videos and all kinds of things so I'm not in any time kind of a rush with her so one thing you want to make sure when you are working with gold leaf like this is that you don't want to have any airflow I mean the good thing right now about everybody wearing masks is that don't have to worry about anybody laughing breathing sneezing or coughing and blowing my gold leaf all over the place and having to start all over but something to keep in mind for the future or if you have a fan or anything else 
you want to make sure to keep that air away because this stuff is so light and airy it will just blow away and drive you crazy and then we went in and chose some dried flowers so I have a bunch of these packages from eBay I believe the majority of them are from eBay some of them might be from AliExpress I'll have to go back and look um, but I realized we wanted to use these ones at first but then as I was pulling them out I realized that they're extremely thick so I would would have had to take her nails down to that very very thin clear layer in order to embed these without her nails getting super bulky so we switched up the design idea and we decided to just choose some other flowers and petals that laid a little bit thinner So I went in with the Kiara Sky base, which is just a glue or a resin, and that's how I applied my flowers. Now I would like to know in the comment section below if you guys have any tips or tricks or ways that you apply flowers that is an easier method when it comes to using acrylic. I have tried the acrylic method where you lay some acrylic, then you put your flower, and then you use saran wrap or cellophane, and you place it on top of the nail and kind of pull it down basically to bend the flowers around the shape of the nail, and then that acrylic and the flower will cure in that shape. I didn't do that with this because I actually thought that the glue would be quicker. Unfortunately, that was not the case. It took forever to apply these flowers and I kind of had to really hold them with my finger and the tweezers and then corner step kept popping up. Now, Talia just recently posted a video where she uses one of those little tiny handheld Amazon um, UV lights and she put a clear jelly stamper stamping head on the end of it and then she laid gel and then cured it like that by pressing the stamper on because it was gel but I'm not using gel here so I didn't want to to use the gel I didn't think that that would work in this situation so again if you guys have any tips or tricks or methods that you use when applying your flowers into acrylic please let me know in the comment section below but other than that I just continue on adding all of these flowers it took a long time but I'm going to fast forward it for you guys so you can get through it quicker than I had to So when I went back and looked at the time, it actually took me almost 20 minutes just to lay those flowers down. So it was definitely time consuming. So now I'm going in with my clear acrylic, my speed clear from the Young Nails, and I am going to just be doing an infill on the nails that are clear. I'm just filling in that back area and also adding into the apex area if I need to or anywhere else on the nail just to make sure that she has the right structure. And then I'm going to be filling in with the flowers. Now when you're working with flowers, you want to make sure that you get the acrylic in all of the crevices so now I'm able to do that with you know quite large beads because I am very familiar with acrylic I've been doing it for 12 years now but if you are not very familiar you can start off with just really small beads and just make sure that you push that acrylic in and around all of those little flowers because otherwise you'll end up with like kind of air pockets and it might not look so nice or when you go to file you might have a bunch of pieces of the flowers kind of poking out and then they might fall out or chip out so you want to make sure that you are able to cover those flowers really well and get into all of the little crevices
Now once we have all of our acrylic applied and it is cured, I'm just going to go back in with my hand file and I'm going to basically just refine the shape. So this is where I want to get my side walls nice and straight and my free edge really, really sharp. She likes them to be very sharp and very straight on, straight on the sides. So that's what I'm going to do with all 10 fingers and then we're going to get ready to add some color to the other nails. So I am again going in and getting rid of the dust and I really, really get in there with this brush and get all of that little bits of dust out. I am going to go in with some alcohol and wipe them as well using that same Smile Line brush. You will also notice that I go in with a little buffer and I am going to buff the cuticle area or the nail bed area of the nails that have no color on them and the ones that have the flowers. I'm really buffing those ones to make them smooth. So the reason that on the clear nail I am going in with the buffer only on the nail bed area is because I am going to be painting a smile line. So one of the ways to get a really smooth line is to apply some matte top coat before you apply your gel polish. But in this case, I just decided to more so concentrate the buffing on that nail bed area where the smile line is going to be. And then I didn't buff the tip or the free edge because I want the gel polish to have those grooves to really stick to so that it has less chance of chipping. But if I was going to put the gel polish on the entire nail, I actually wouldn't buff at all. So she decided she wanted one full gold glitter nail. So we did this one from Madame Glam called It's Not You, It's Me. It is absolutely my most favorite gold glitter gel polish from them. Now granted, I don't have any other ones <laughs> to compare to, but I love it. It's such a fine, fine glitter and it's the most perfect gold. It's not too yellow, it's not too champagne. It is perfect. So I'm going to go in on her pointer fingers and apply two coats of that, curing for 60 seconds in between each layer. So next we chose two other colors from Madame Glam. This one here called the Rule Maker, love this color. And this one called the Boat Trip, I love both of these. The colors are so vibrant, they go on so nicely, and you really could probably get away with one coat if you absolutely needed to, but I always recommend doing two thin coats. So I'm just going to start off by using um, one of my brushes from eBay. You guys know I use this brush all the time. It has lasted quite a while so far. And I'm just going to start off by painting on that smile line and then I'm going to fill in the corner areas with this brush and then I'm going to go in with the brush from the bottle and fill in the rest and again I'm going to do two thin layers I'm going to do the teal color on the pinkies and the pink color on the thumbs so I generally would have created more of an elongated um, smile line to give a longer nail bed, but for two reasons we didn't do that. One, she actually prefers shorter nail beds and longer tips, and two, the nail is built in a clear acrylic, so if I would have done that, you would have basically seen the natural tip underneath or even beyond that, if I would have done a really elongated natural smile line, excuse me, you would have seen even more of the nail plus the clear. So that's why we did a shorter nail bed.
And then to tie in a little bit of that gold, I just took that same gold, the It's You, It's Not Me, I think it's called. It's Me, It's Not You. It's You, It's Not Me. <laughs> I took that same gold and the liner brush and I just drew a simple line down the center of the nail just to tie in a little bit of that gold. And the last step, you guys, is to add a layer of top coat. I am only going to do one layer. I don't need to do two layers. There is nothing that I need to put two layers on for. And I'm going in with my Young Nail Stain Resistant. You guys, I love this top coat. It stays shiny and it really is stain resistant. I had two clients last week. One is a hairdresser and her fingers looked atrocious, but except for her nails had no stains on them, but all around her skin, her natural nail, like the growth underneath were like brownish, blackish, and just really gnarly looking. But her nails where the top coat was, had no staining and I had another client who got her hair dyed in a very bright fuchsia color like the brightest fuchsia hair I have ever seen <laughs> came into the nail salon and again not one stain where the top coat was yes her natural nail where the growth was had a little bit of staining and the underside had some staining but not any staining at all where the top coat was so this stuff really works you guys so a little trick to helping your top coat stay shinier longer, I cannot say for every single top coat, but I do believe it works with this, the Young Nail Stain Resistant, is to just allow them to cool for maybe a minute or so when they come out of the curing lamps. Sometimes I'll get my clients to just wave their hands around a little bit to sort of expedite that a little bit and then go in and wipe the dispersion layer if there is a dispersion layer. If there's not a dispersion layer, I would still do that before you apply your cuticle oil or anything like that just give it about a minute and then rub in your cuticle oil and I swear to god you guys it works my clients come back with their nails really really shiny of course with the exception of people who have their hands in chemicals and stuff like that without gloves now ladies if you're watching this and you're doing dishes and you're using bleach or you're using cleaning products and you're not wearing gloves tisk 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 don't do it girls put on some gloves all right guys, so that is it for another Watch Me Work video. I love these nails. They're so perfect. They are absolutely my color scheme. Actually, she even picked the colors. So I was like, yes girl, we are team teal and pink all the way. I love the addition of the gold flake. Again, if you guys have any tips and tricks to laying your flowers quicker, because this took me 20 minutes, let me know in the comment section below. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it with someone else. And as always guys, have an amazing day. Amazing day.